Biotechnica. Welcome to another video. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about the careers in nanobiotechnology, the future scope and research opportunity. Suppose if you're someone who is thinking to do a research in nanobiotechnology, then I'm going to talk about what's going to be the future scope and what are the research opportunity that are available for all of you. So come along with me and let's discuss about the topic in detail. This is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. Let's talk about the complete topic in detail. So first, let me give you an overview of what is this nanobiotechnology. Of course, we know about nanotechnology, but I'm going to talk about nanobiotechnology. So before going, let's have an overview of what is this nanobiotechnology. Of course, we know nanotechnology itself is a versatile field. So nanobiotechnology is going to be a wonderful field. So it's going to be just the makeup of a biology along with nanotechnology. And we already know here in this we are going to have a scientific knowledge we are going to need to have engineering and technology all these things make up the complete nano biotechnology and we are going to um, calculate the matters on an average scale of nano scale of about 1 to 100 uh, nanometer we are going to use nanoparticle and we are going to uh, do some sort of research i'll be talking in detail and we are going to use some uh, physical chemical nano tools to build many nano biomaterials like nano uh, biochips we are going to uh, manufacture and we are also going to use it for many many purposes so if i have to talk about a nano biotechnology of course a biology along with a nano nanotechnology where we are going to have an analysis of a matter on a nanoscale of 1 to 100 nanometer. So this field is actually growing if I have to talk about very specifically when we have to talk about the research that's been going on. So the next important thing is work of a nanobiotechnologist. What usually a nanobiotechnologist does? We know about nanotechnologists but what is this nanobiotechnologist? So as a nanobiotechnologist, they can go in for many of these uh, roles that they can do. Like they can go in for diagnosis. Like usually we know when we go in for a diagnosis of any sort of the internal organs, we use many, many techniques. But nowadays, nanobiotechnologists started doing this diagnostic things because the nanoparticles are almost going to be in nanoscale level, which is 1 to 100 nanometer, which is literally very, very small. So when we are going to use this nanoparticle, it is definitely going to be a wonderful career tool or a career material or it is also going to use as a probe for many diagnostic aspects like medical imaging also helps in this one so nanobiotechnologists can definitely become uh, enter into a hospital and work as a diagnostic purpose also and of course when we talk about research we know that designing a drug delivery system yes of course we know when we are going to talk about any drug so the drug particles are usually going to be large in size but it has to be incorporated into a cell or into a body which means the size of the drug has to be smaller in length so what we usually does is we used to incorporate nanoparticle with the drug and we used to reduce the size of the drug initially and then we used to add some hydrophobic nature of the drug and so that it usually crosses all the cell membrane so this is how we usually design a drug delivery system so that the drug at a very reduced size along with the hydrophobic nature can cross the cell membrane and reaches every cell that it has to work upon so this is very specifically used in animal system if we have to talk about it and liposomal mediated uh, drug delivery systems are more widely used so people started working as a nanobiotechnologist and designing drug delivery system because the drug has to be retained in the cell for so long and it has to be very very effective inside the cell and do its action so this is going to be a wonderful uh, medical research field that's going to be growing in the later fashion the next one designing gene delivery systems of course initially we talked about how we are going to deliver the drug with the help of nanoparticle here how we are going to deliver the gene into the human body yes of course we know about gene therapy so when we talk about gene therapy we use to use a lot of viral vectors which can be a DNA form of viral vectors or RNA form of viral vectors. So whenever we use any sort of viral 
as a vector and we introduce the gene into the viral vectors, there is a problem of immunogenic effects can be seen. So people might be showing some immunological effects against the viral particle which enters into the body. So in order to prevent that, what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate a nanoparticle with the gene and deliver the gene into the host cell. So by doing this, we can prevent the immunogenic effects that are seen in the viral uh, vectors. So that is going to be an advantage which we don't have an immunological problem when it comes to this. Of course, nanobiotechnology is making miracle in gene therapy also. The next one for repairing cellular damages, of course. So whenever there's a cell damages, we also use this nanoparticle in a very less amount and we used to introduce and we used to uh, repair the cellular damages. And when we have to talk about nanobiosensors, as I already told you, nanobiotechnologies, we have nanosensors, but when we have to talk about nanobiotechnology, we create nanobiosensor. The major role of a nanobiosensor is to analyze the chemicals or the biomolecules that is present in your body. So what we usually do is we used to incorporate this nanoparticle. It might be any nanoparticle. Along with that, we used to incorporate with a chip. And then we used to introduce into the body so that it analyzes the chemicals or the biomolecule which is present inside the cell or body. The next is similar to that of a nanobiosensor only. It is also used in medical field, diagnostic fields, agriculture fields. So it is a nano lab on chips. Same way. The next is going to be tissue engineering. This is the most widely growing field, I can say, because uh, we used to engineer the tissue. Suppose when we have to talk about people who are uh, suffering from bone diseases or people who are suffering from orthopediotic diseases, then we used to go for this tissue engineering using the nanoparticle and we used to treat such kind of diseases. And of course, it is used in dentistry. Most of you might have gone to the dentist and observed. They use a lot of nanoparticle for diagnostic purposes. So it is also used in dentistry and nanobiotechnology, of course, in agriculture. Yes. So when you go in for plant based research, you would come to know how you use a nanoparticle along with a plant. Even when you isolate a drug from there, we used to incorporate with a nano drug and we used to introduce into the animal samples into a rat or whatever it is. Apart from that is also helpful in the agriculture purposes for crop improvement. And it is also going to be helpful in the resistance to some kind of climatic changes. So this is all about the work of a nanobiotechnologist, which means uh, there are a lot of things that's been done using a lot of research activity. But nanoscience has made everything more easier and effective and delivery based things very, very easier. So this is going to be a wonderful field that I can say if you're going in for any sort of research. So nanobiotechnologist is going to work. Now, the question for us is, if I want to become a nanobiotechnologist, what do I have to have a qualification? So I'm going to tell you, if you have studied bachelor's in biotechnology or microbiology or biochemistry, whatever BSc you might have done or bachelor's you might have done in your engineering, but you need to have your master's degree. So that's the minimum requirement. Not only after your BSc, you cannot go and become a nanobiotechnologist researcher. So you need to have a minimum degree, which is going to be your master's degree. So you need to have a two years MSc in nanobiotechnology or a two year in M-Tech nanobiotechnology. If you have done B-Tech in biotechnology, then you can join a two year in M-Tech in nanobiotechnology. Suppose if you have joined a BSc in biotechnology, you can join MSc in nanobiotechnology, then you can become a nanobiotechnologist. So this is a wonderful field. So people who are belonging to this can definitely go for this one. The next one. Okay, now the question for us is I wanted to do research in nanobiotechnology. What are the universities or top institute in India that offers nanobiotech research? So I'm going to talk about in India, the top institute that offers PhD or research programs in India. So of course, VIT, this is the department and IIT Ruke and IIT Kharagpur and NIT Krukshetra and Amrita Center for Nanosciences in Kochi, Kerala, Integral University in Lucknow and Center for Excellence is Nano Electronics Bangalore and the Central University of Jharkhand Ranchi, Amity Institute of Nanotechnology in Noida, 
and sent up sastra university in tanjavur tiruchirappalli so this is the top institute which offers phd programs in uh, nanobiotechnology of course there are a lot of institutes which provides phd programs in nanotechnology to be very specific i'm talking about the nanobiotechnology suppose if anybody wants to do a phd in nanobiotechnology then you can look around the website and you can get to know what are the eligibility criteria for that the next question is of course you're going to do research what are the job profile files that are going to be available as a nanobiotechnologist so you can become a research assistant in any sort of laboratories or you can become a research associate and gene therapist as i already mentioned nanobiotechnology is responsible for gene delivery systems of course so you can also become a gene therapist we know about the gene therapy role that that is playing these days gene therapy is the final remedy for most of the diseases so becoming a gene therapy through the study of nanobiotechnology is going to make a wonderful miracle in the entire world and the next of course is going to be a research scientist so if you want to become a research scientist you don't have to rely on to becoming a nanobiotechnologist only you can enter into a biotechnology field or agricultural food processing because when you go for food processing we always think about the microbiologists and food science people can only enter but even using a nano bio nano materials we used to uh, do some antibacterial activity also so even a nanobiotechnologist plays an important role in food processing and genetics of course and then space research yes nano uh, research is very good in the space research like isro if you're going to go in for you can go for it and of course medicine it's going to play a wonderful role over here so, so you can enter as a research scientist in any of these fields the next is nanotechnologist as i told you nanobiotechnologist if you are someone who likes to enter into engineering along with physics you can also become a nanotechnologist and the next is if you want to become a professor assistant professor associate professor after completing your phd in nanobiotechnology you are always welcome to teach to the college students or university student the next one is going to be consultant nanobiotech knowledge is it is like a consultant you can also become all these things so this is all about the job profiles that if you're going to do as a nano biotechnologist now let's move on to the next one so it is about who hires nano biotechnologists which means which field you can literally go for it i'm going to talk about it so what are the field you can go for it so these are some of the field that you can really into so you can go in for biotechnology agriculture as i already mentioned agriculture we use nano particles these days for crop improvement and forensic yes of course nowadays we started using um, nano particles for na forensic science also bio process companies if you want to go for bio process companies or bio technology technology companies you can go pharma and medical yes as i already mentioned it is helpful in medical research so definitely you can go for pharmaceutical and medical food industries of course i told you food industries bio defense if you want to go for government jobs then you can go for defense college and university research labs also you can go uh, into a academy also you can go and material sciences if someone wants to enter into a kind of engineering chemistry science and technology then you can go for material sciences like polymers textiles packaging everything you can go for it if someone who is very much interested in environmental things environmental monitoring control and remediation we know about the environmental research people are lot of things they are using this nano particle so these are Are some of the field where a nano biotechnologist can enter, which means a nano biotechnologist can enter into any field that's actually available in the market because they know science, technology as well as engineering. And the next is going to be how much does a nano biotechnologist is going to get in salary in India as well as in global scenario. In India, if we have to talk about initially, I'm talking about is an average salary which is four to seven lakh per annum, but the increments and incentives will increase according to the experiences and along with the specialization and the skills that you're going to have. This is the minimum salary that they're going to get an average salary. If we have to talk about a global scenario, how much does a nano biotechnologist Knowledge is going to get. It's almost going to be forty-two thousand uh, US dollars. This is the global scenario and average salary that they can get. But this can vary according to the experience as well as the skills that they possess. What's going to be the future scope? Okay, I was talking about yes, you can become a nano bio uh, technologist after completing your bachelor's or your master's. But now the question come for us is: Is this nano bio technologist going to 
pertain or it's going to be uh, continuing or it's going to retain for a long period of time then i'm going to tell you yes you can find this nano biotechnology career growing even after 10 to 20 years so definitely you can go for this because as i already mentioned you're seeing it has a greater application in drug delivery tissue engineering, gene therapy, food safety, nano diagnostics, various therapeutic area. It serves a major role in all the uh, problems that's been existing in the entire world, whether it is medicine or whether it's pharma, whether it's tissue engineering or gene therapy or treatment or nano diagnostics or even in food and forensic, it plays a large role. So it's definitely going to be a greater future and it's going to be having a greater future value also. And it's found that 14.5% job growth rate is going to increase by the end of 2030, which means if you are going to study your nano biotechnology, then you can be having a job rate if you're going to have your experience along with your skills. If you do not have your experience, then we cannot say that you will definitely going to get it so check on to the skills that you need to possess as a nano biotechnologist also so these are the areas where you can go these are the application of the nano bio technology career okay now let's move on to the ninth point which talks about the top recruiters uh, let me just talk about the top recruiters who actually recruits this nano uh, biotechnologist one is definitely going to be CSIR laboratories uh, if you go in for the research whoever does work on the nano biotechnology then you can join them as a, a project assistant research assistant research associate JRF SRF and of course DRDO as I already mentioned nanobiotechnologies are more involved in bio defense also so drdo you can go for or you can go for barc bark you can go for applied material sciences you can go for or you even you can enter into engineering field and if you want to go for some companies you can definitely go for dr reddy's laboratories and even indian institute of science recruits nanotechnology and there are a lot of nits usually recruits nanotechnology candidates who have a knowledge in biology also so these are the top recruiters who recruits candidates who are passionate doing research in nano biotechnology. Okay. Now the next one is industry. Suppose if I have to talk about industry, who is going to be the recruiters or which are the industries you can literally go for. So you can go either for electronics or semiconductor industry. Yes, uh, when we talk about diagnostic, we should understand one important thing is medical imaging is used and even semiconductor nano crystals are used in medical imaging or for diagnostic purposes with the use of nanoparticle only. So you can literally go for electronics or semiconductor industry or even textile industry, you can go for it. And auto and aerospace industry, as I already mentioned, you can go for aerospace also biotechnology field you can go for it and medical field and pharmaceutical food science quality control and packaging forensic sciences research in industry so these are some of the industry that you can literally en enter and become a successful nanobio technologist and i'm going to tell you one thing nanobio technologies if you're going to start a research career definitely it's going to be a greater driving force for you and it's going to be a greater future because now people started using a lot of nano nanoparticles uh, incorporated into a biological system for a faster delivery system and also for the efficacy of the drug has been increased. So if I have to talk about the research opportunity uh, from the, the nanobiotechnology, I'm going to tell you it's going growing faster even with the job growth also. So you can work as a nanobiotechnologist doing any sort of jobs that I've been talking about, but look around the educational qualification and now also the skills. If you want to join PhD, just look around the um, universities and the top institute that's going to offer and the job profiles and what are the industries or the recruiters and who hires the nanobiotechnologists, what's going to be the salary packages and do you have a scope in nanobiotechnology? Of course, I'm going to say with a S, you have a lot of scope pursuing your nanobiotechnology research. So I believe that this video is helpful for all of you. So if you are a nanobiotechnologist, what research you would love to do in it? Is it based on your plant science or animal science or whatever it is? Put it in the comment section and let's see through it. Thank you all of you.